impacts the whole. Everybody must know what is going on and how everything is interconnected. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. And I think that's the same thing, Doctor. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, really, that Doctor Jeffries is saying now mm -hmm. and coming under attack for. But some of the same things that he's saying. Uh, some of the same things that have been said for many years. Uh, many scholars, even some of the white and Jewish scholars have said the same thing, but because he is who he is, he's coming under attack up in New York. Um, for that. Well, I think that there's really two or three reasons why that's happening. Mm -hmm. And I would point yeah, to I'm Dr. Sure Francis Cress Wilson. Yes. And the reality is, is that time is running out on the what I like to call the cultural regime that is presently ruling the planet. The house of cards that they have built in terms of defining what is history and who did what and who had what role is being undermined and, and torn asunder and it's collapsing because the lies are being exposed and as the lies become more and more exposed it's not a matter of this media catchphrase of um, political correctness that's not the issue yes the issue is rectitude the is issue is accuracy the issue is dealing with facts and you know what I like to point out to people is this you can go to almost any elementary, junior high school, even high school in America, and look at the textbooks, whether they're current textbooks or textbooks that have been in use for 10 years. Right. And they will say in there that Egyptians don't have anything to do with Africa, that the first civilization on the planet was in Mesopotamia and, and uh, Sumer, when in reality, if you go to a college, even JC's, and take That's the right. same world history course, they will start talking about that man originated in Olduvai Gorge and Serengeti Plain near Kiliman, foot of Kilimanjaro, that the oldest civilization was in Egypt, and these people were Africans. So why are we teaching two different things? That's like right. teaching the children about Santa Claus and then having to tell them later there is no Santa Claus. I mean, you know, why establish a lie in the first place? But there's so much built and emotional investment in that uh, fundamental lie. And that financial, too. Well, of course. Well, of course, yeah. Of course. Of course. Let's, get in, let's get into the poetry. And, uh, <laughs> if we get into, but I love it. I love it because yeah. it is all connected. Mm -hmm. All of this is connected. Uh, you know, when you think about it, because you can't get away from it. You can't get away from your roots. And, Not at all. Uh, and poetry is certain, uh, certainly a part of that. And uh, being a griot, you know, an African griot, right. uh, we definitely want to get into that. It's part of our responsibility to, to sustain and maintain and elevate that whole process because it's the art that stimulates the spirit, stimulates the consciousness, and motivates people to act. And I think that that's very important. Mm. You have some wonderful work, brother. I've, you know, uh, glanced at your work and all. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a book forthcoming. Well, actually, I had planned on um, publishing a, an, an anthology of my poetry, or short stories, and some essays along with my photography this fall, well, this past fall. Mm -hmm. But um, the reason I'm actually in D.C., I'm getting ready to go to Africa for six months, okay. and I had to make a choice, either publish a book or take the trip, and it actually worked out to my benefit that I chose to take the trip rather than make mm. uh, do the book. Do the book later. Because the financial investment that would have been involved and then trying to sell the book and the economy that we have right now would have been, a, you yeah. know, a challenge. Not to say it would have been impossible, but it would have been a challenge. Mm -hmm. So now I've redirected my resources. And uh, we'll probably come out with that book later, maybe the end of this year. Okay, share with us if you will. Okay. We talk about the poetry, we didn't get into it yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the one I'd like to start out with, to follow up on what we were just talking about, um, I called a friend of mine in uh, L.A. and had them... See, I didn't bring a lot of my material okay. with me, and I had them uh, dictate this uh, to me over the phone from a copy that I had there. Okay. It's called Uncivil War. One, an aimless army is massing at the border anxious to ice the enemy. The calisthenics are drive-by ratatats, hot lead rhythms with laughter for melodies. Railroad tracks are seen as lines of steel, daring them to cross over. Their emotions splash, crashing across walls and faces, war paint words, crippled letters, blood writing, dripping truth. They stand, flexing, corner monuments to aimlessness, adult Adult desires are erotic engines driving adolescent flesh. Their teeth are razors clenching tire iron toothpicks. They stutter, repeating their truth, making it unavoidable. They scream pipe dreams while strawberry jams, humping air, awaiting a new horse, a pony to express her mind. Two. Old lions and bears now sheep, cringing, lost in the gulf between us and them.
They peer down from the hill, from smoke glass sedans, afraid to face the cancerous community, afraid to face to face the cancer devouring what once was home. Self-consumed, eyes unfocused not to see, ears wax thickly, deaf to the rapt truth, and the rapt truth is deaf. Porcelain Negroes, Reaganized against reality, and nuppy Republicans in search of a new deal, unable, unwilling to recognize death's new faces from new hiding places, docile in the face of despair, their reality ambushed by a gentler kind of predator. Their spirits so arthritic they cannot stand up. They bite their lips, chew their tongues, anything to drown their inner squeal of suppressed outrage. Disgusted by graffiti gorge walls, dismissing the poor handwriting and bad syntax, thankful they cannot comprehend the wisdom on the wall. Three, flexing, conflex flexing, elder know-how mistrust young can do. Conflicts flexing must end. The thumb cannot attack the hand. It's uncivil war within us. Mm, most beautiful, brother. Thank you. Wow, that's, I mean, that's something. I mean, you, I mean, you take me there. You bring so much to it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's part of also knowing who you are and knowing some history about yourself. And, and, and reading also is yeah. very important. And that also, I mean, you can't get away from reading. And, you know, I talk to young people and they say, well, I want to write. I said, well, the first thing I would, say, I would tell you, you know, as a writer is to read, develop, learn uh, good reading habits. Right. And, and, you know, make that a habit of your everyday life to read, you know. First of all, I say read at least three newspapers a day. Well, I, I agree. I agree. I think that um, one of the things that I have found in my research, you might find this interesting, is that we often talk about the fact of so-called pre-literate societies that did not have writing. Well, there's a quote in um, Herodotus, um, one of Herodotus' works, where he quotes a story of a man who, as a Greek, invented writing mm. and brought the idea to a I king. Want, I want to hear about that, but we've got to take a break. Okay. We're going to be right back in sure. just a second. This is Danny Queen calling me poetry. We'll be right back. <laughs> 